Hi, my name's Abe, and today we're going to walk through a kinematics problem that's slightly harder. So let's get into it. I'm throwing a stone vertically upwards from the top of a 20 meter tall building, and it hits the ground, eventually, at 50 meters per second. How long was it in the air? Alright, so we're throwing a stone and it hits the ground at a particular speed and we want to know how long that stone spent in the air. Maybe it helps if we just draw ourselves a little diagram of how all this happened. So we know that there's 20 meters here. We're throwing a stone from the top here and it's going like this and it hits the ground at 50 meters per second and this is the ground, yeah? Cool. So that's essentially what's happened. Noting that Noting that we're only counting vertical um, vertical motion, so we're not taking into account horizontal motion at all. Um, also note that we start, so at the start we know that we're 20 meters high and we hit the ground at 50 meters per second. Now a key here is that our velocity here is downwards, obviously, at negative 50. So it's actually negative 50 meters per second. Now that part is kind of key. So knowing that then, let's get into our problem. Again, we know that you know if you're throwing things in the air and um, we know that there's air resistance as well as gravity, but we ignore air resistance. So we know that acceleration is negative 9.8. It's an assumption that we make, and it's a pretty good assumption. And we know that, what are we after? We're after some kind of, um, we're after a time value. How do we get there? Not entirely sure. So the best thing to do, if you're not entirely sure, is to write down the facts that the problem does give you. So what, are the, what, are the, what does the problem give you? Right, so acceleration is assumed. You know that you start at 20 meters above the ground. So at t equals zero, x equals 20. Now, do you know the speed at the start? The, so what's, what's the velo velocity at the start? We don't know, right? We don't know how hard we're throwing this thing. Um, you do know also that it hits the ground at 50 meters per second. So when it hits the ground, x or displacement is zero, and v is negative 50. Okay, do we know any more facts? Doesn't really look like it, does it? Alright, so this is all we know. So, strategy here is to plug in what you know and see if you can find a way out of this. So, given these facts that we have, we know that velocity is negative 9.8t plus some constant, right? Do we know the constant? No, not simple. Doesn't seem very hard. It doesn't seem very easy at this point. Okay. So, fine. Move on. We're interested in displacement as well. So x. Well, you just have to integrate that. Negative 4.9 t squared plus c t plus d. So now we've got two unknowns inside our displacement. Um, however, here we know that, hey, at t equals 0, x is 20. So, so we can use this fact and do something with it. So we know that d equals 20. So we can rewrite x. x is negative 4.9 t squared plus ct plus 20. Yeah? And we know too that v is negative 9.8 t plus c. So now we've only got one more fact left, which is this one. x equals 0 at v equals negative 50. How do we use that? Well, I suppose what we can do is say, okay, um, at some point in time, 
this condition is true. x equals 0, v equals negative 50. So we've got two equations here, these two, that we can plug this into. So let's do that. Let's plug these in and see what happens. So basically what we're saying is for some t, we're not sure what t, in fact that's the t we're trying to find, x equals 0 and v is negative 50. So let's do that over the page. So if we plug it in, we're going to get this. We're going to get negative 50 equals negative 9.8t plus c and we're going to get 0 equals negative 4.9t squared plus ct plus 20. Oh, sorry, I wrote in that thick font. It's alright, you guys can read that. Alright, so that's what happens. And so look what we have now. We've got two equations and two variables and maybe we can get something out. Now what are we trying to find here? We're trying to find t, right? At what t do we have this condition where uh, x is 0 and v is negative 50? So looking at this, the top equation has just c in it. The bottom equation has... Sorry, not just c. 9.8t plus c. The bottom equation has t squareds and stuff like that. We're interested in c, so why don't we try to sub out this c and we can use the top equation to find what c equals. So here we see that c equals 9.8t minus 50. Yeah. So over, over here this is a t, not a 6. 9.8t minus 50. So let's sub that in. We're going to get 0 equals negative 4.9t squared plus, now c we know is 9.8t minus 50, t plus 20. Oh look, now we've got an equation just on t, which is really, really encouraging. 4.9t squared plus 9.8t squared minus 50t plus 20. So simplify that, you get 4.9t squared minus 50t plus 20. Great! That is something that you can solve. And when you, when you do solve it on your calculator, you'll see that you'll get 0 0.41 or 9.79. Alright, so we know that we're looking for a time here, right? Time's got to be positive, but both of these are positive. So, how do these both come about? You see, they represent two different scenarios. So if you like, I'm going to draw my building again. And we know that this is 20 meters tall, right? Like that. So. The two scenarios look like this, because remember all we've specified in this problem is that the ball, or the stone, hits the ground at 50 meters per second, and I throw it off the top of the building at some speed. So I'm going to tell you what that first one is. That first one is when you just peg the ball down really, really hard, like that. And so imagine throwing the ball so hard that it hits the ground at 50 meters per second, which by the way is very, very hard. And it goes to 20 meters in 0 0.41 seconds. Pretty ridiculous. Um, the second one is when we do our nice little loop. It probably loops quite high in the air and then comes down and hits at negative 50 meters per second. So they both work. But in the question, we've said 
that we're throwing it vertically upwards. So that short answer, the, the 0 0.41, that doesn't work out for us. And so our final answer is that it takes 9.79 seconds in the air before the stone hits the ground at 50 meters per second. All right, so that's that example. I hope it's been helpful to you. I'll see you in the next video.